good morning everyone uh, good morning sir am i audible clear yes, sir yes sir yeah so i hope all of you are listening uh, today we will discuss uh, the strength of des and also we, i will introduce uh, aes algorithm so we will see only a brief introduction to the aes algorithm so and also uh, what is a double des and what is a triple des with two keys so these are the objectives for today's lecture uh, first i will discuss strength of des then i will discuss this uh, double des and triple des and finally i will introduce the aes algorithm so we may i mean uh, the mid one syllabus will be up to this introduction to the aes clear to all of you the syllabus for mid one or unit test one <clears throat> up to aes okay mid one syllabus will be up to aes okay please confirm and uh, okay sir yeah inform to other students also who is not there in the class so uh, the strength of the des is one is the use of 56 bit keys or 56 bit key right we have used 16 uh, k1 to k16 for uh, each round in the des correct then the strength of one um, i mean uh, one more strength of a des is the its nature of the algorithm that is uh, the architecture we can say uh, because the s boxes are classified no so that also one uh, we can say strength and uh, timing attacks so one by one we will see so we know so with a key length of 56 bits how many possible keys yes this one so what are the different types of transformation or we can say possible uh, keys how many possible yes respond simple it's a 2 power 56 so which will be approximately like a 7 into 10 to the power 16 so very large number right so that's why it is a so brute force attack is impossible or we can say impractical impractical <clears throat> so what was the brute force attack please respond anyone yes trying different passwords lot of times yeah so trying all possible keys right so if i want to try for this number of keys so it may take more than 1000 years or at least if i go for half of those also so more than 1000 years even i mean uh, if we take suppose uh, if i take one encryption one encryption take one microsecond right so now you can think for this number of uh, possible keys or how many i mean the number of encryptions so it may take for each encryption one microsecond then to such for all these keys it may take more than 1000 years okay for each encryption if it consider clear but but when we uh, implement parallel machines when we implement parallel machines and each machine is uh, taking one uh, for a one encryption one microsecond so it will be reduced to only 10 hours right 
searching the key will be reduced to 10 hours. So when we implement parallel machines. So these parallel machines may be uh, 1 million parallel machines. So it, it should be like that. It, it, will, it will not be like 10 parallel machine will do the work. No, it will be more than million. Just remember that a parallel machines will uh, reduce the key search time to around 10 hours. So finally, even though uh, it's a 56 bit uh, key length, so in 1999 or 1998, uh, the DES finally proved that, so it is somewhat insecure for the encryption or decryption. Right. So even though the strength is a 56 bit key, but by uh, doing parallel machines or by uh, different different types of algorithms, so there is a possibility that to decrypt the ciphertext. Next one is the nature of the alg DES algorithm. So we have seen that the cryptanalysis is possible. Cryptanalysis means by I mean. Uh, uh, using some algorithm or using some technique decrypting the ciphertext. So if we know or if we exploit the characteristics of the DES algorithm, so it is possible attacking this uh, DES algorithm only by exploiting the characteristics of the DES algorithm, especially the substitution tables are called as S boxes. In the previous lecture, we have seen uh, there will be eight S boxes which uh, will take six bits as an input, six bits as an input, and four bits as an output. And I told that S boxes were classified. So users don't know what is the what is the algorithm or what is the logic is there in the S boxes. So even though uh, they are not uh, disclosed. And uh, users think that there may be some uh, weakness in the S boxes so that uh, cryptanalysis is possible. But so far, no one has proved the weaknesses in the S box, or no one succeeded to find the weaknesses in the S boxes. So, that is one more, you know, the nature of the DS algorithm, which is the strength. Clear? All of you? One is the the 56 bit key, the next one is the nature of the DES algorithm, especially S boxes or substitution tables. Next one is the timing attacks. So, anyway, the timing attacks is a less uh, a possibility, or we can say DES algorithm easily resistant these timing attacks. But what is the timing attack? Is it's a very simple information about the key or the plain text is obtained by observing how long any implementation or the algorithm is performing decryptions on various ciphertext. Suppose ciphertext one, ciphertext one, so suppose this is system and it is converting a plain text. So it may take, suppose uh, 10 minutes, example I'm giving, ciphertext two for a decrypting this, the system two and same system may take five minutes. This I'm giving the example. So for the different different uh, ciphertext, the implementations are taking the different times. So by observing those, so there may be chance of knowing the key or plain text. So that is the call. Uh, I mean, uh, called as the timing attack. So by observing. Uh, for the different different cyber text, how the implementation is performing the decryptions. So based on that, we can know about the key or plain text. But as I told already, so the DES algorithm is resistant to this type of attacks, timing attacks. So is it clear to all of you? Timing attacks? and uh, nature of the DES algorithm and the use of the 56 bit keys. <clears throat> Please remember these numbers or keys or uh, block sizes, you will get questions. So please revise carefully.
And uh, one more effect is there actually uh, in the BES algorithm. I'll explain that. That is called the avalanche effect. Right? It's not uh, like uh, avalanche breakdown, etc. In EDC, right? So, what is this avalanche effect? Is suppose if a small a small change in plain text or key will leads to will leads to a big difference or we can say a yeah a big difference in the plain text blocks okay so even though if a small one num i mean one bit change in the plain text or one bit change in the key will have the so much difference in the no not plain text cipher text okay is this clear the avalanche effect if there is a small change in the plain text or key so that leads to uh, a lot of difference in the cipher text so because uh, we know in the des algorithm there are 10 rounds right so when they are going each round so many permutations or combinations or substitutions so there is a lot of difference in the cipher text so that is called avalanche effect clear all these the uh, four concepts respond clear right please respond so that i will move forward yes sir now we will move to double des right or uh, as uh, i mean uh, even though 56 uh, the key size is 56 2 for 56 possible case so there may be chance or we can say it is insecure by but to en enhance so there are alternative uh, to that, that is that generally we use triple DES, but we'll see what is a double DES and uh, what is the drawbacks. Then uh, we'll discuss triple DES. Triple DES is the uh, advanced version of the uh, normal DES, which will have or uh, which will enhance the security. And uh, one more is AES, advanced en encryption standard. So double DES is very simple. So it will perform two times the encryption. Right, so with the two different keys, so each key is a 56 again. So here, two for 56 possible combination, and here also two for 56 power. I mean, two for 56 combination, or we can say the key size here will be 112. That means total possible keys will be 2 power 112 possible keys, right. Which will make the I mean uh, brute brute force attack impossible at all. So this is the encryption. So the decryption is is opposite to the encryption. So cipher text then decrypt with the same K two first. Then this is the intermediate values. Then again, one more time decryption with a K1 to get the plain text, right? So here, I mean, we can say a drawback. So there may be a chance that, so using a K1 and K2, there may be a chance that it will generate a third key, right? So I mean, possible key the possible so 56 combinations 2 power 56 means different sequences will generate so there may be chance that two keys will be same or combining k1 and k2 there may be chance of generating a another key right which will lead to here so the k1 and k2 would be possible to find a key such that the encryption of k2 and already we have performed encryption of k1 and comma p so when we get something like this that is there is a different key which is happening for the plain text which will be this encryption and this encryption may be equal 
that may be a chance because so many possible combinations so there may be a chance that so two different pairs or two different sequences will match so which will leads to the double ds again it is a single encryption with a single 56 bit key so that is one uh we can say a drawback so it will become a single stage only even though it is a double time ds it will become a single uh stage so how so two different keys we are using so this k1 and k2 may be find a key such that this will happen okay so what is this actually if i go for the encryption uh, see here how can i write this c is something like this encryption of k2 comma x x is the input for the this block and what is the x output of the first block which will be again encryption of k1 comma p if i substitute x here it will become capital c is equal to encryption of k2 comma e of k1 comma p so that is what is here right yes or no the first one so there may be a match with some different key with a plain text p if that is possible so it is leads to only single stage is it clear in a double ds what is happening and uh, one more attack is possible here which will call meet in the middle meet in the middle attack okay just uh, see what is actually happens in the block diagram so this is the middle right middle values right so based on the suppose if i know a plain text and a cipher text example so this is one print so using k1 what is k1 56 possible keys will be 2 power 56 so using this 2 power 56 possible keys i will encrypt all this uh, i mean encrypt the plain text for all this k1 possible keys next similarly i will decrypt capital c using k2 so this is the decryption and this will be the encryption so i will compare these two so comparing these two if there is a, any match then that will form a key right again using these keys how many matched again using these keys we will try different pairs non pairs if again there's a match so we will come to know that those those are the real keys so that is the meet in the middle attack alert so using a non pairs our plain text and cipher text using k1 using k1 the keys 2 power 56 possible keys i will encrypt and i will store somewhere then similarly i will take here as a uh, c as a cipher text and i will decrypt using k2 and it will match these two fellows if there is a perfect match so that is a key right how many matches are there those number of keys will be there again one more pair we will uh, use only these keys to match if it is matched yes this key will become a real key then it can be used to decrypt a different different plain text is it clear meet in the middle just taking known pair of plain text and cipher text and if possible this one time encryption another time decryption because encryption and decryption so if these two are matched with keys those keys will be real keys and we will try in a different different pairs if again it is matched so those will become the real keys clear clear to all of you so to avoid that the triple ds was proposed let me know all of you is it clear double ds two times with the two different keys right
So next one is a triple DES with two keys only. Actually, triple DES means we should have K1, K2, K3, but that will increase if uh, three keys are there, that is K1, K2, K3, then three into 56, how much you will get? 168 is the key size, then two power 168. So large number of possible keys, but it will increase the complexity of the circuits also. That's why uh, the Dutchman proposed two keys only. How see the procedure? First encryption with K1, then perform the decryption with K2. Again, perform the encryption to generate a ciphertext. And remember this encryption, decryption, again encryption is similar to the phasor structure what we have used in the DES algorithm, 16 rounds, phase 1, phase 2, phase 3, everything will be same. So I can write A is equal to encryption of K1, P, B I can write decryption of K2, A and C is equal to encryption of K1 comma B. So final okay. ciphertext we can write it as encryption of K1 comma decryption of K2 comma encryption of K1 comma P. So when it is going multiple times, it's uh, very uh, difficult to attack. Any type of attack is possible. So that's why advanced version of DES will uh, enhance the security. Because so many times permutations, so many times substitutions, right? Similarly, the decryption is, is just opposite that you can easily understand. So this is the encryption. This is the decryption. Okay, only two keys, not three keys. Clear? Similarly, you can write for this P. Please write down on your own. Is it clear to all of you? All the points? Double DES, triple DES, and uh, the strength of DES, that is using 56 bit keys, uh, nature of the algorithm, timing attacks, and uh, one more is avalanche effect. Please can, uh, respond so that I will discuss the AES, and uh, you will have a, I think, a Coursera webinar, right? From yes, sir. Yeah, so the advanced encryption standard. So here a uh, slight uh, different, but uh, combinations, permutations will be more than the DES to, uh, to give more security. So here the cipher takes a plain text block of, or uh, block size of 128 bits compared to 64 bits. Now it is 128 bits, but remember, it will be processed as a bytes. So 128 bits will be converted. If I make bytes, it will become 16 bytes. Correct? Yeah. And uh, you should remember one uh, word. One word is nothing but 32 bits. And one byte we know anyway is 8 bits. So 16 bytes means 16 into 8, which will give 1.8, right? And here, the key length is not fixed actually. So that will be uh, based on the number of rounds. The key length can be 16 bits, 24, 32. Now remember, it's not a bit, sorry. It is a bytes. 16 bytes are 24 bytes are 32 bytes. That means 1.8 bits, 192 bits are 256 bits. 
Is it clear? 128 bit can be, I mean, uh, see, if it is simple, means uh, we can take up the plate text as 128, the key size as a 128. Or plate text 128, key length 192. Plain text 128, key length 256. So based on that, we can call it as a AES 128, 192, 256, depending on the key length. Right? So it's a, this is very simple. So the input to the encryption decryption algorithm is a single 128 block. It is not a multiple blocks 128, but we will convert into bytes and we will store. So one byte at a time or multiple bytes at a time, etc. Up to now it's clear. Please remember uh, the block size and the key length. Key length is not fixed. Minimum 128 to maximum 256. How it will take? We will see in the block diagram. So here also there are number of rounds. See here, are you able to see? See, Ma, please confirm. We, yes, sir, we can see. You should write somewhere. If the number of rounds are 10, the key length will be 128 bits or 16 bytes. The number of rounds are 12, key length will be 24 bytes or 192 bits. If the number of rounds are 14, 32 bytes or 256 bits. Yes or no? So this is very, very important, the key size. So based on the number of rounds, the key size will vary. Now, I will explain just block diagram uh, in today's uh, class uh, for now. Uh, in details, we will see after the mid exam. See here, this is the input block or input plain text. So here, the 128 bits will be converted into 16 bytes and a 4 by 4 matrix. So something like this. One. Two, three. Oh, it will become five. Huh? Now, see carefully. Uh, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then nine to fifteen, etc., etc. It will go to one twenty seven. So first eight bits, how many are there? So this is 16 bytes, so four by four. So one byte will be stored here in this, in this box. Then second will be not going in a row, uh, row side, actually it will be column side, okay? Then five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So the column wise, they stored in a, this uh, we can say it's a, a state array. It is called state array. So input state array or output state, uh, state array. Are you getting my point here? How they are storing 16 bytes. So in a column wise, okay. First byte will be here. The second byte will be in this, uh, second row, first column, and so on. Got the point? So initially this will happen. Please confirm. All of you are listening or not? No one? Yes, sir. Right. Now, first, again, uh, the keys also will be like a bytes only. So round zero key. So uh, before, actually round one will start here and round n will end here. But before that, we can say pre-round key. Remember, pre-round key is different and actual round key is different. 
so here round key, zero key we say so 16 bytes so this is uh, we can say 16 bytes again 16 bytes means what how many so 128 bits only correct so 128 bits are we can say four words correct enough four into 32 128 bits so either 16 bytes or four words right so that will become initial transformation the input coming from the this pre-round key and input from the input state array will take one permutation or what is the transformation that also we'll see and that will be again stored in a state array so state after initial initial transformation so uh, generally here uh, they will perform xor operation okay that also we'll see anyway later but just remember the input state or input bits the block size of plain text will be uh, there is a uh, what do you call uh, the process is called initial transformation the for the this one is the input block plain text another is the round zero key or pre round key so which is the same the key length will be same 16 bytes only or four or four words or 128 bits then actual round will transfer i mean uh, will process here so round one to round n four transformations to round one four transformations that we will see later or what is the transformations there mix columns etc we will see that four transformation from round one to round n minus one but in round n the last round only three transformations will be there so what are those transformations etc in detail we will see later just to see what is happening here so n number of rounds but one to n minus one four transformation in each row i mean we know right hazel structure same uh, what you call functions round functions or similar to that round one to round n minus one same functions are transformations so one to 15 sorry if there is a 16 no 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 not 16 rounds rather. so suppose if there are 10 rounds so one to nine rounds four transformations then the 10th round only three transformations so what are those we will see later and for each round 16 byte key now total how many possible uh, the words we can say these are 1 to 10 means 40 words plus pre round key which is one word one word of no four words so total how many 44 words of key ma clear on this how many so if, I, if i ask you a question so total how many possible words of keys possible in uh, as 128 then you should able to tell if as is uh, 256 how many possible words of keys Got the point here, please? Yes, sir. So, uh, what is happening in the rounds? What are those substitu uh, substitutions, permutations, uh, mixing the columns, etc.? That we will see in details later. I will show one example here. I mean, uh, how the states. So, input state IN02, IN15. Then the substitution tables S00, etc., are the states, I can say states or substitution tables etc so how many are there they will be stored here then this will be the output so cybertext if i want out 0 1 2 see here i told you know they will store in the column wise not row wise okay so something like this under the key so k now to k15 again this is also 16 bytes if i take uh, the input is 16 bytes so 4 by 4 and this is the expanded key so word 0 to word 43 so total how many words 44 words of key in that first uh, will be used in the pre-round so round 0 key that means that the first one is 
this one is uh, used in the pre round operation the remaining 43 sorry sorry something is wrong w0 to w3 four words we will use in the pre round correct yes or no yes yeah so this will be pre round keywords the remaining we will use in the corresponding rounds so i hope all the points are clear in the aes uh, especially you should remember the print text block size key sizes based on the or uh, num uh, based on the number of rounds so 10 round 16 bytes that means 128 12 rounds 192 bits 14 rounds 256 192 or 196 192 okay so we will see all the details uh, later what are the transformations etc and what are the substitution tables and, uh, and next lectures okay so far if you're having any question please ask Any question? All the points are clear? Yes, sir. Clear. Okay. Okay, ma. So, uh, everyone uh, attend the webinar on the course, sir. Okay? Okay, sir. Okay, then. So, that's it for today. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So, sir, can we leave if you're done? Yeah. Okay, sir. Yeah, okay, sir. Thank you.